Hey, right. uh, you know, we were supposed to be at the shop right now. We're running really late. My alarm didn't go off. I'm a little stressed, but we still got time to stop at Starbucks. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to open the vlog. All right, Alberto, so thoughts on the uh, the hometown roads? They were really nice. Actually, this road is really nice if you pay for it. It's like a racetrack. I, I didn't realize that there's a way to go to Tommy's shop from where I live that isn't all highway, and it's actually shorter. So that's sick. This car needs uh, some stickers, but in a different kind. I was saw an Adam that he looks like a Dukes from Hazard driving around town in the orange car, just like messing around. A Dukes of Hazard livery. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, you should put one on. That might actually be <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, you got the right color. Yeah, you're not wrong, but actually it works. He already got the attitude for it as well. Like I got the attitude for it. He's pretty much being like okay. you're doing some Dukes of Hazard stuff around here, you know? What's the what's the girl from Dukes of Hazard? Daisy? Is that her name? Is it Daisy Duke? I'm not sure. I, I haven't watched the movie. I just know about it, but I haven't watched it. I actually should watch it when I get back home. Looks like we got a little roll reversal going on today. I'm giving Tommy a hard time while he's trying to get stuff done. I'm trying to move so you can use my lift. Oh, is that what you're trying to do here? Rushing around. Did you? I can use my fucking lift. Did you fix your map sensor yet, guy? Yes, I did, guy. Does she rip, guy? I haven't got on. I just changed the fuel pump because I had the stock fuel pump in it. So. Wait, you know how to work on cars? A little bit. I only assembled this completely entirely alone. Oh, you did? Why did you take it to Texas then? I can't weld. Can you weld? What? Can you weld? I could probably get it done. Like this? I, I mean, not, it may not look like that, but like it work. Well, that's all that matters, I guess. Yeah. Now it's Zealand. Yeah. He doesn't even say anything, he just sits down. <laughs> well, that's not fun. I was wondering if he's gonna be a seat? Dude, look how funny that looks. Dude, I wish that's what it looked like. Dude, it kind of looks cool. Ooh, I'm excited, dude. Heck yeah. I'm so excited to get this thing on a lift so we can look up closer. Farmer in the Dell. The farmer in the Dell. Hi ho the dairy -o, the farmer in the dell. I'm like actually pretty excited today because I've got the help of the man, the myth, the legend himself, Tommy F. Yeah. Hell yeah. I feel like it's only right since technically would you say we are doing some F. Yeah spec stuff to the this Evo right now? Is filled with some F. Yeah spec shit. So. For sure. Tommy's been bugging me about opening this box, so I might I might let him have the satisfaction. I kind of want to open it with you. You want to tag team it, brother? Sure, let's tag team it. We just can't cross knives. This is the box that contains everything that's good about life. This is the box of life. Let me open this Yeah, so we went a little bit extra for the Evo. How long ago did we order this stuff, Tommy? Uh, like a month after you bought the Evo. So we, we ordered this stuff a while ago. Um, Last November. This is all handmade stuff from New Zealand. And it's been sitting in Tommy's shop, what, for like five months now, yeah. four months? And plaguing me because I've wanted to look at it. I know, and I didn't want to open it until we were ready to put everything in. So now if it makes a little more sense why we took everything off the car. Um, pretty much Cromoly everything made by a company called Racefab in New Zealand. Rob helped us out. We got us all set up. I was looking for arms and I was having a really, really hard time uh, finding, basically replacing bushings and arms and stuff at Evo. And somehow it escalated into full Cromoly subframes and every single arm brand new on the car. So um, the cool thing is in addition to having all these like really nice hinds now instead of worn out bushings, I think it saves what, like 80 pounds? Yeah, I think it was like 70 or 80. Uh, so I'm excited, the car's gonna be on rails. It's gonna feel brand new. It's gonna look sick too. Hell yeah. This thing, dude. This is some sorcery. It only took me like 
20 minutes to talk Adam into this too. Shut up. Yeah. How did you find out about race fab? My buddy uh, has an Evo 2 hill climb car. A lot of people use race fab stuff on all the time attack Evos all across the world and stuff and order it from this dude in New Zealand. And uh, I just, I don't know, I want, I like, the Evo's my favorite car and I just want like the best stuff on it. <laughs> Here we are. So now that the car's on the lift, you guys can get a better idea of everything now, all nice and undercoated. Look at those fender walls and everything. Looks so good under here. The only thing that I did notice is, um, I guess there's a miscommunication and the outside of the uh, pinch walls wasn't done, but I got a can of bed liner that I can just use to basically touch up this area and seal this off. But all the important stuff back here, where the rear arms and everything mount to, is all taken care of and super nice and coated now. So we'll be super protected and my baby will stay nice and safe from all that stupid rust. I got my video all edited and uploading. Hey dude, I just wanna let you know something. Thanks, dude. Yep. Just, just want to let you know. All right. Just don't mind all the expensive wheels littered all across the floor. We're gonna go do some Evo things. Got to make a quick part store run to go get some crush washers, some cotter pins. And we're gonna take Tommy's R32, which sounds like it's running better now. Dude, I hope this thing's all sorted because Me too. it, it really, really sounds like something I want to be driving right now. I'm like listening to it, I'm like, oh, that's calling for me. It's a little jerky. It doesn't like like 12% throttle. I gotta redo the TPS, I think. So we take my GTR out for its maiden voyage, and this is the shit we get. Dude, you literally were like, you burn a smoke coffee in my car. The dude got, Alberto's got four drinks here for no reason. <laughs> He's so needy sometimes. And like a bunch of weird food. Like a number four with this and that, and then an extra one and He's some so dipping great. sauce. I love this him. is heinous. I love him. I love how much you hate Alberto. It's hilarious. Oh yeah, I hate him. If there's anything you should know about driving my GTR, it's not bringing shit like this in it. Tell them why. <laughs> Especially because Tommy's GTR right now, the TPS, it drives like junk. So it's it's like, uncalibrated. <laughs> it's gonna spill. And, and he's sitting on $1,500 Nismo floor mats. I'm actually sitting on $300 no. bogus seats that came in my 32. Dude, these are stock, what? sir. Sir. No, you don't say stock sounds like they're bad. You say they're OEM. Okay, they're OEM. Oh, I got OEM seats in my car. This is, uh, you know what, I got not OEM. Milkshake, Dr. Pepper, coffees. It's, no one needs as many drinks. <laughs> I'm with you, man. It's America, dog. It's a different time of day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> different time of day. Oh my god, there's there's literally... Shake it off, dude. There's literally a Dr. Pepper in my lens. How is Dr. Pepper in the lens? Because you spilt it. Look at what I'm, happened. I'm How long ago was the last clip, guys? <laughs> How long ago was it? Do you have like a, a, a wet rag and I'll wipe up all this stuff for you? Listen to this guy, a wet rag. <laughs> Relax, brother. This, this, this. I'll vacuum it up. It'll be all right. I feel like Rudnick. I bet his car is full of that shit. Your camera's covered in Dr. Pepper. I'd run under the sink. It's a big old yikes for me, too. <laughs> no. That did not just happen. <laughs> oh my god. What a day. <laughs> Dude, that's. How do you feel about that? I don't feel anything anymore. <laughs> he said, I don't feel anything anymore. Well, no, but look how much he's got done. So the rear's what? 85, 90% done? Oh Missing axles. I'm gonna christen this Evo 5 with a liter of cola on the floor. Oh god. Me and Alberto have been having some fun with the sway bars. As you guys know, Alberto is a man for the front. So he's been playing around in the front, moving up and down. 
Did I'm just saying, dude. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Like, you know, you started in the back and you finished in the front, but like, I finished off the rear for you, dog. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, dude. You know, like, this was a tough job, and like, I'm gonna ask if you could mind holding the camera for me real quick, so I can simulate, cause it's not as easy as the front. I know that you like it easy, but like, I like a challenge. Yeah, it'll be good. So like, look, we got <sighs> full traveling clearance. <laughs> See my arm a little loose and stuff. <laughs> like it works, you can trust me. What's wrong with your back? My back? Yeah. What do you mean? What's wrong with my back? Is that all, is that how you see it moves? No, it's not that easy to move. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what are we talking about? What happened? I thought it was supposed to be loosey goosey. Loosey goosey? I don't like a loosey goosey. Yeah, it's all tight back there. That would be. It's like that. <laughs> you sound like that guy from Kevin Hart. All right. Let's try. Well, brother, remember what I was talking about last night when I was looking for the, the good old. I didn't know what it was called. I was, I, what was I talking about? He was talking that I, I he was, he dollar. was trying to call for a hand truck. Hand truck. He was going. That's the word. Yeah. How, how was it supposed to go from? You were saying to dolly. hand truck. You were saying dolly it's, last It's time. a dolly or hand. Hand truck thing. is the word. Dolly well, could mean a lot. You were calling. Yeah. I was like. What? What, what kind of name like, is that? I come to Alberto's room. I'm like, Alberto, I need a. And he gives me a look. He's like, like you'll need that what? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, Alberto, uh, how's everything going? How you doing? Tired. Yeah, I'm a little sleepy. Last day. I kind of give up filming because uh, my camera shot after I had Dr. Pepper spilled on it. The lens just won't open up anymore. And then I realized Alberto has his camera here. So uh, one thing that I thought I just wanted to point out, um, if you remember, I had the issue with the axle binding under right turn. So it's a common problem on these. I already have the shorter Evo 4 axles, um, but it's still a problem where this axle binds. So instead, before, what I had to do was raise it a little bit. A trick, since we don't have shorter axles and I don't think that I can get them anytime soon, um, we have adjustable lower control arms now and we were kind of looking at them and figuring out what we can do and we can get away with extending them 15 mil. So rather than getting our camber out of the top hat, we can get our camber from the lower control arm and mitigate a little bit of that axle binding issue. So stuff's coming together, uh, almost done. Only problem is we don't have Evo 8 rear axles, which we need to go with this diff, which is an Evo 8 RS diff. We've gone ahead and deleted all the active yaw control stuff. It's just kind of a common thing to do on these cars when you start taking them to the track. But the race fab subframe is built around an RS diff. So I've got the ultra racing sway bar on there. Pretty much everything's getting all together. And then tomorrow uh, we're going to take it over to Tommy's friend who does a lot of like race alignments and stuff and he's gonna uh, actually like align the car properly, corner balance it, make sure the rake is good and everything with how we have the suspension set up and get this thing super dialed in with an aggressive uh, street track alignment, probably for some stickier tires than I already have on it. So stuff's really nice though and I'm excited to see how it feels. Looks so nice with all the fresh undercoating underneath, all protected, I'm super stoked. I have to acknowledge how crazy this is right now. We're literally about to finally bleed the brakes. Right what comes on, bleed it out. Weird. Because of the axle situation and not having the Evo 8 axles, since I got Tommy's Evo 8 diff, but he didn't have the Evo 8 axles, and my Evo 5 rear axles won't work with it, um, it's gonna have to wait till tomorrow when hopefully I can go run over to this guy's house that has Evo 8 axles and finish up this thing and get it aligned. So I'm excited to uh, see if I notice a difference and see if I notice a difference in the weight savings and having all solid himes now versus all the bushings that were kind of worn out and old. So I'm excited. All right, so it's currently the next day. Alberto flew back to Orlando, but I didn't go with him because I'm going straight to Texas for Lone Star. I just ripped over this morning to go get some Evo 8 axles from a guy who goes by the name of Turbo Tony. So I've got the axles, I'm gonna pop those in. I gotta drill out uh, the knuckle in the front where the new tie rod bump steer correction kit will mount. Uh, it just kind of lowers it a little bit so it goes kind of in line more with the arm so it doesn't get weird when the car's lowered. Um, man, I've been running around like crazy. It's gonna be hard to film, but if you look uh, before, the tie rod used to be up here and if you notice, it's not really level with that lower control arm. So what happens when you have a situation like that is when the car compresses you start to get what's called bump steer because the tie rod isn't perpendicular and that length will change and then it'll make the wheels do weird stuff so his bump steer kit actually takes the tie rod and mounts it underneath instead with a nicer uh, heim style joint instead of the factory little bushing one tom what do you think about my, uh, my little apron you look cool i know dude. <laughs> i'm a little jealous yeah well i i don't have a change of clothes and i'm kind of 
I'm trying to like not not get all covered in hot metal. I already burned my neck a few times. Looks sick. <laughs> He's like this. Yeah. I tell people they're hickeys. Oh yeah. Yeah. I hate hickeys, dude. Those dude, are so, so weird. So so rudnick? weird is what I was. Right, dude, strange. Are super rudnick. Are they? It's super Torrington. Yeah. Let's just super Torrington. Hold this right here for me. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Nice and slow. Dude, that's a serious knuckle you're drilling in. I got the most expensive drill bit, dude. How Giving much? that knuckle a real hickey. Five times five, twenty-five dollars. Five times five. That's how he tells you prices. How much was your Porsche? Your Porsche? It was five it times was fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. We got bad news, but good news. The bad news is the exhaust doesn't work with the subframe. Maybe it's universal and you're supposed to have an exhaust that comes out of here or something. But uh, the, good, the bad news is I'm gonna hack this exhaust up because um, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't, but maybe I should. I'm going to, so. This is where it's touching. Yeah, but anyway, um, I didn't really like it that much anyway, unfortunately. So I'm, the good news is the car is gonna be loud now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a nice little. I would go know, this yeah, way, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Um, so do you think I should do it? I would do it behind the set, like right there. Yeah, okay, like that. Yeah, you think sir. this is long enough? I think so. You I think you. I think no. I think it'll work though. Okay. Like that or more? Uh, less. Less. What are you trying to make a little downturn? Well, yeah. That, otherwise, it'll help with like resonation and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do it as much as you can then. Side note: If you're a fabricator and you want to make me a nice Evo exhaust, hit your boy up. I need someone in Connecticut. It's killing me because I'm so used to doing like pretty much 99% alignments and then taking them to the track and not actually getting proper alignment all the time. But Tommy's got a friend like right down the road that's going to help us align. So it's like killing me not to get it better because look at how bad the rear ends towed out right now. Why is it so high? I don't know. I'm so different with the arms and it's still on the left. I don't know, it looks like it's still on the lift. Oh, it's because you have that wood on that one. Yeah, but that shouldn't make that big of a difference. I don't think it's on it, so. We'll, we'll play with that and everything there. So the battery's hooked up, so we should be good to start it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's gonna be loud. Should we move the lift and stuff? It's really not that loud. It, I guess. Just watch your mirror. Really? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Watch your car. Ty, fix his mirror. This thing is all over the road. It's bad. These guys are legit. They got a semi and race cars. Heck yeah, brother. This shop in here is actually where Autotechnic preps their customers' race cars. So they do a lot of uh, race stuff in here. And Charlie, a friend of Tommy's, is helping us get it all dialed in. First thing we're doing is just getting everything set up with the corner balancing and uh, getting the ride height better. So believe it or not, with the new subframes and all the new arms on the car, it went down from 3,000 pounds uh, without me in it. I don't know like of the variance in gas, so I might have a little bit less gas now, but now it's 2872, so it's about 128 pounds less. Um, again, uh, the variance could be because of gas or the fact that I chopped off that muffler, but that's quite a bit of weight savings. So, what's the first step? Are we gonna get the rake all set up? Yeah, I'm gonna look at, fix the rear toe because after we after we install the subframe, the rear toe is out a lot, so I want to make sure that doesn't change the ride height too much, and then yeah, then we'll bring the rake back down in the rear. Cool. So I got some specs from Keeley over in Australia and from RaceFab, the people that make these subframes and arms, and it sounds like either no rake or like 15 mil of rake is kind of what we want on this. I just met this guy. He's already taken a saw to my Evo. Gotta trim some stuff. Yeah, I figured it'd be easier to get some clearance of these fake fenders than uh, change the alignment a bunch. Because these things would stick out a ton before the actual chassis is up there. So, yeah, I don't know. This mark's always been on the car. Maybe like uh, rubbed up against something or. 
I blame it on Tommy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna now that like the car's undercoated, I want to get it corrected and um, coated, and then like any paint repair stuff, I'll get stuff like repainted. Then after the fact, to see what can be brought back and what can't, you know. I just didn't want to do it before the undercoating and have overspray on stuff. Yep. I was talking to Charlie about these BMW race cars. So I guess you can actually buy these new from BMW as a race car already caged. I think this is their 235 one that's pretty much stock performance wise in terms of like engine and drivetrain. But it literally comes from BMW caged, set up like a proper race car. So how cool is that having an OEM cage made by BMW? I think these cost somewhere around like 100 grand or something and it sounds like a lot but if you guys know the cost or the time it takes to build something like this, that's pretty sweet. And knowing that it was built by someone like BMW, like look at this, it even comes with air jacks. How cool is that? I think so rad. It's dark but Ty's riding with me and Tommy's going to lead us through some back roads just to see how all the new suspension stuff feels. Unfortunately I won't be able to get, out. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get onto a track this trip. But I uh, figure it's kind of necessary to do some sort of test and give you guys some sort of impression of how it feels. So this seems to be some fire stuff. This thing is so fast. It's been a while since I've driven it. This thing feels good. It's hard driving roads that I don't really know that well, but oh, yeah. I'm just trying to really get a feel for that side to side, all the pushing deflection I used to get before and see how that uh, feels now. It doesn't make a lot of noise over the bumps like I was worried about. Like let go. You wouldn't be able to steer if it was a tie rod. What do you think that is? One of the arms probably fell right off. Just go slow. Gotta love building cars and them braking right after you just do a whole bunch of work to them. That's always fun. First impressions. How do you feel about your suspension mods? They feel good? I mean, yeah, but like. <laughs> it's definitely this one, right? What is this? It's probably, it's rubbing, I guess. What? No, that has to be old. Must have been a rear. Yeah. Or something. It's definitely old. You know why that just happened? Fuck the jack, I'm just gonna look. Something done. Dude, nothing looks... Can you jack it up? Yeah. Oh, your, your sway bar is loose. Eh, maybe those are just washers, I don't know. Does sway bar have an action? No. What the fuck? Keep going. Yeah. You're good. Oh, that wheel is loose or something. No, it's not. Can I do that again? The wheel's not. To do it side to side. Fuck yeah, it is. The other side's not moving at all. Tie rods connected. Axle looks fine. Control arm looks fine. What the hell is that? Coilover looks fine. I literally see nothing. Is it that side? Don't get too far under there. Ty, can you wiggle the wheel side to side? Adam's not done breaking his car yet for the night. So we're gonna try this again. You're not done breaking your car yet, right? Sorry, right, we gotta back up. Whoops. Yeah, we do. Tommy said to go take it out again. I'm, I'm concerned there's something wrong. You think maybe something just got
out of There it was. What? It's right there. It's doing it again. Yeah, something's wrong with my front when, dip. When you hit the, it does feel like the front dip, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. It feels so like suspension because like the whole car shakes when it happens. No, it's definitely something in the front diff going Yeah. On. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Alright, well we don't have time to sort this out tonight. That nope. sucks. So what do you think it could be? Rod knock, dude. You got Rudnick luck tonight. I we didn't even like do anything to it. Well, you drained the fluid and put it back in and took it all apart. So oh, do you have ACD light on or anything? AYC lights on, but is yeah, your ACD? Yeah, it's because it's deleted on there. What is your ACD? Do you have that no. in this? Dude, that feels wild. All right, sad night. It's okay. Adam can't just do anything without breaking a car. I didn't even wear my driving tool broken shirt today. I thought about it. Ah, that sounds terrible. Pull like to the right when you get in. It's a sad end to the Evo project since I'm kind of bummed I wasn't able to get to rip on it. But hopefully next time I'm here, I'll be able to beat on it. I really want to pit it up against this thing. If you guys haven't seen this in videos before, this is Tommy's K Miata, but it's going to be gone soon. Tommy's doing a giveaway on it. Um, kind of like the same thing that Trevor's doing. Tommy done a pretty cool K series swap in this thing. There's a lot of really rad parts, a lot of rad like arms, big brakes, all the nine yards, and he's doing a giveaway on it. Tommy, yes, can, can you give my viewers a discount code? Adam LZ works on the whole site. Across the board. Is that what it's gonna be? Adam LZ. You'll do it? No space. Alright, so if you guys want to enter for a chance to win Tommy's K-Series Miata. You heard it here, folks. Yeah, we'll do pop it. Come on, dude. This is just a junk Miata if you don't pop the hood. Oh. ITBs, brother. Dude, it looks so good. It does. So this thing is really, really rad around the track. I drove it around the autocross track you drove it a while back. Too. I did? Oh yeah, I did. It's good. Well, actually, you did, and there's some evidence of it. What? This piece I need to replace. Oh. Remember you went off on turn three. What are these, like 20 bucks on eBay? Yeah, I already got them. Yeah, I bet. I just got to replace it. Yeah. So, anyway, if you guys want to check this out, I'll put a link in the description. It's pretty cool. 9,000 RPMs, bitch. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for letting me use all your, your shop space, Tommy. No problem. Any, any time. Except for any other time from now. Okay, bye. All right. Back to Texas. Okay, bye. Hey,